Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking Game Boy 3D text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to download our assets. So I'm just using Sketchfab. So I'm just using a Game Boy model created by George Klein. All you have to do is download the GLB and then we'll take it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. The first thing that we need to do is create a new composition. I'm just running with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, then what we need to do is we need to import our GLB file. So just come over here and import file. And now we have the GLB imported. So all we have to do is just drag it to our timeline. So now that our file is imported, we just have to change the scale a bit. So I'm just gonna put 0.6. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold command and double click this pan behind anchor point tool to move the anchor point. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press P for position and just drag down this uh, value over here and then I'm going to press R for rotation and I'm just going to set the Z rotation to 90 degrees and that's the animation that we are actually going to do right now. So once you've done that then you can press the stopwatch for the Z rotation, move to the end of the composition and just change that to a 1 and now we will have the Game Boy uh, rotating around in that direction. If you want it to go in the other direction, then you can always put a negative value. So now we need some text. So I'm just going to create a new text layer. The font that I'm using is called Pretendo. And again, it's from dafont.com. The links will be in the description. And the color that I'm using, I'm using this from Scheme Color. And here, this is the Game Boy color scheme. So I'm just choosing that red. So now once you have your font and you have your color, you can write whatever you like. So now I've got a bit of text and now we need to make it wrap around a mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm on that text layer. I'm going to come over here to the ellipse tool. I'm just going to hold command and shift and I'm going to draw a ellipse like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the text properties, open up the path options and change the path from none to mask one. So now I have my text wrapping around the path. Now, obviously the text is a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the font size until it matches up like that. So now what we need to do is we need to make it 3D. So the first thing that we should come and check is if we are in the 3D renderer. So if we go to the composition settings and then if we go to 3D renderer, make sure that you change it to advanced 3D. So once you're in that, then what we can do is we can come down to our text. We can go animate enable per character 3D. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold command and double click the pan behind anchor point tool to move that anchor point in the middle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to down to animate and add rotation. And now that I have rotation there, I'm going to go to the X rotation and I'm going to change that to, let's say 90. So now the text is more kind of vertical. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the transform section over here and I'm going to go to the X rotation and I'm just going to change this to like negative, let's say 65. So you can play around with how 3D you want it. So if you want it to wrap around a little bit more, I've went down to negative 75. So I think that looks pretty cool. The next thing that we are going to do is just extrude it a bit. So if we go down to the geometry options and then if we just click on extrude, now we've got that cool kind of 3D look. So might as well put it to, I don't know, like something like 20, something like that. Then what we are going to do is we are going to go back to the Z rotation and we are going to animate that. So if I just go and click on the stopwatch for the Z rotation and I go to the end of the composition, this time I want it to go in the opposite way. So I'm going to go and put it as negative one. So now we have the text and we have the Game Boy spinning. Now, if you want to go back and resize anything, you can. 
for example, if you want to make the text uh, bigger, something like that, you just have to worry about whether or not the text, you know, actually goes in the background. And if there is a little bit of clipping or something like that, you can always increase the scale to make it look a little bit nicer. So the final thing in here that we are going to do is we are going to go down to the material options. So if we open up our text layer, go down to the material options over here. And if we increase the specular intensity to let's say 75, if we increase the shininess to let's say 80, maybe 83, something like that and we increase or decrease the metal to about 59 60 now we have a bit more of a darker kind of look which is kind of what we're going for so now we need to do some lighting so the first uh, type of lighting that we're gonna put in here so if I just go new light I'm just gonna add an environment light and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that the intensity is 150 and the shadows are checked and I've put shadow darkness at 500 but that's all right we'll just uh, press OK. So now we have some environmental lights happening over here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and open up the environmental uh, section over here go to the transform and now we can play around with the Y rotation. Now, if this is a bit slow, we can always press on Draft 3D, and now you can see what is happening once you move this light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna animate that um, a little bit. So I'm just gonna hit the stopwatch, move to the end of the composition, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put that to 110. So now it goes from, actually maybe we'll start it at zero. So we'll start it like that and it's got like just a little bit of light in there and I think that looks pretty cool. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add another light. This time it's going to be a point light. And so for the color you can kind of choose whatever. Um, I'm just going to choose something maybe something like that. For the intensity uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower that down a little bit and I'm just gonna leave everything else like that. And so now you can see that I have that point light. So when I move it around, it kind of gives that kind of different effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to animate the position. So I'm just gonna press on P for the position and I'm just gonna kind of have a sweep from top to bottom pretty much. So, and then if you want to change the, you know, how close you want the point light to be, you can do that with the Z axis over here, but I'm going to leave it like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it at the start of my uh, timeline, move to the end, and I'm just going to kind of bring it down just to the bottom like that. So now we have some lights, you know, that kind of increase this scene. So, and I think that looks uh, pretty cool. Now, the final things that we need to do is we need to kind of dress it up. So the first thing that we need to do is we need a background. So I've just gone to free pick and again, I'll leave the uh, links in the description and I've just gotten a grunge kind of background and I'm just gonna import that into After Effects. So there's my grunge background and if I just put it at the bottom of that clip and then just press S for scale, now I can scale that down to however I like. So now once we have that, then what we need to do is we need to add some curves on this. So if I just search up the effect called curves and now if I, you know, bring this down, maybe bring that up slightly, you just want to have a little bit of, you know, kind of darkness in the background. So I think that looks pretty cool. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add an adjustment layer. So if we add a new adjustment layer, cool. So now once we have the adjustment layer, what we need to do is we need to take off Draft 3D and then on the adjustment layer, I'm gonna search for the effect called CC Radial Fast Blur. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that the center point is just coming from the top. I'm gonna increase the amount to maybe let's say 65. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over to the the mode and change the mode to screen 
All right, now it's still a bit bright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press T for opacity and then just lower that down to let's say 30. And you can play around with some of these settings, maybe increase the amount or something like that. The next adjustment layer that we need to add in here is we need to add some noise. So I'm just gonna add some noise and make sure that it's 10%. And now we've got that cool kind of retro kind of feel on that. Then the final thing that we need to add is just some smoke. And for this, I've just gone to the website called VidEasy and it's another asset. And all I did is just downloaded this and then I'll take this into After Effects. So now that I have my smoke in here, what I need to do is I just need to scale it down a little bit. So something like that. And then I need to drag it all the way down um, just a little bit above my background. Then what I need to do is I need to change that also to screen. And then if I press T for opacity, I can really drop that down. So now all I need to have is just maybe something like, you know, 10, 15% whatever you know suits your document and there you go that's how you get a 3d text effect with a asset that you downloaded so anyways guys thanks for watching i hope you learned something and i'll see you guys in the next video